Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome to my Monkey Madness 2 Day 1 Walkthrough Guide. I'm gonna get this right off the bat. This is not like a super concise, get-done-quickly guide, okay? This video is meant to be like a kind of watch-as-you-do-it type guide, where I'm literally just going to complete the quest on my main, and I'm gonna kind of talk you through what I'm doing as I do it. Of course, I will go through the things like requirements and item requirements and all that stuff, so hopefully this guide will be definitely helpful to you, but again, not a super concise short guide. going to be a really, really long guide where I kind of just walk through it and hopefully get some use out of it. So, first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at the quest requirements for Monkey Madness 2. Uh, so, first of all, you have to have completed the Enlightened Journey quest. Now, you can't just complete the quest. You also need to unlock the Grand Tree destination using the balloon system. So, if you haven't unlocked that, make sure you go ahead and do that right away. Uh, you also have to complete the Eyes of the Glow Free quest. You have to have freed King Awowoge in Recipe for Disaster. And you also have to have completed Troll Stronghold and the Watchtower quest. Okay, now on to the stat requirements for Monkey Madness 2. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that you cannot boost to get these stats. You actually have to have the stat itself. So, uh, The stat requirements are 69 Slayer, 70 Crafting, 60 Hunter, 55 Agility, and 55 Thieving. And lastly, onto the item requirements for Monkey Madness 2. You need a Lemon, Grapes, Pestle and Mortar, a pickaxe, regular logs, a monkey speak amulet, a monkey talisman, a plain one, and you lastly need the medium sized ninja monkey grigri. So there's a couple of ninja monkey grigris, there's the tiny one and the bigger one. You want the bigger one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the quest itself now. Uh, just a little pre-information before we start. Monkey Madness 2 is broken down into four separate chapters. Now, if you click on your quest guide, it will tell you what chapter you are in, but I'll also tell you when a new chapter starts because I'll tell you what items you need to bring. Essentially, what's going to happen is with each chapter, you have to do different things, so you're going to want to change what items you bring and what you're wearing. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get started. This is chapter number one. When you first start the quest, you need to have regular logs, a lemon, pestle and mortar, and grapes. So, come to the Grand Tree and talk to King Nardno Chirin, and you can start the quest. Tell him that you will help him look for Glow. Uh, he will ask you to go ahead and check his house. Now, if you remember where that is, it is located just to the southeast of the Grand Tree. Once you have arrived at his house, climb up the ladder and then climb up the tree. Uh, once you are up here, right-click this tree branch and click on Investigate. When you investigate, you will receive a handkerchief. Go ahead and investigate that as well. After you've done this, you need to go talk to his wife, Anita. So, climb back down the tree branch, and uh, from this point, you want to go to the most northwestern ladder in the entirety of the Tree Gnome Stronghold. Once you're here, go ahead and talk to Anita. Uh, when you start talking to her, she'll begin crying. You're going to want to ask her what is wrong. Uh, and then when you get to this part, make sure you ask her, he might be in trouble, I could help. Alright, at that point she reveals that there is a second level to his home. So, back to, uh, back to Glow's house. Alright, once you have arrived at Glow's house, go ahead and climb up the tree just as you did before. Once you've done that, this time over there will be an option to climb up the tree once again. This will put you at the top floor of Glow's house. So go ahead and search the gnome crates, this will give you a brush. Then search the fire remains, this will give you a mysterious note. And lastly, click on the gnome statue, it will give you an option to turn it, click on yes. I've already done that, so it's not letting me do it, so again, click on yes. Then open and search the cupboard, it will give you a book of spyology. Okay, so what you're going to want to do now, in this order, be very careful. Use your pestle and mortar with the lemon, this will apply it to the note. Then, use the note on the candles right here. Next, grind the grapes, and this will give you a juice-coated brush. Then, use the juice-coated brush on the mysterious note, and voila, you have a scrawled note. Now, obviously, you can't read this, so what you need to do is read it, and then after that, go back to King Narnod Shireen, and he will give you a translation book.
Okay, once King Narnone has given you the translation book, use the translation book on the scroll note, and it will fix it, so then talk to the king once more. Once you have done this, you're going to want to return to Anita, and she can translate the note for you. Alright, go ahead and ask Anita to translate the notes. She will do that for you. Once she gives it back to you, return to the king once again. Okay, so once you talk to the king as I just did, you now need to go talk to August. August is located on Entrana, so that means you need to bank all of your armor and weapons, and uh, I'll meet you on Entrana. One quick note before you leave for Entrana, I would highly recommend bringing a magic log. Uh, if you bring a magic log, it will allow you to travel back to the Tree Gnome Stronghold with the balloon, since you're on Entrana anyway. Once you arrive at August, talk to him about Assistant Lay Smith. Alright, once you're talking about that, go ahead and fly back to Ambitol. Uh, as Again, you don't have to do this, but I would highly recommend just bringing a magic log and going to the Grand Tree. Uh, once you arrive back at the Grand Tree, go ahead and talk to King Nar Node, and this will be the end of Chapter 1. Okay, so now we're beginning on chapter number two. Uh, for this part of the quest, you are going to be running through essentially a tunnel version two. You remember on Monkey Madness 1, we ran through that long-ass tunnel? Well, now you're going through another one, but except it's harder. You need a pickaxe, a monkey-speak amulet, your plain monkey talisman, a monkey gree gree, a light source, some prayer potions, and I would highly recommend stamina as an antidotes, and then sharks. Uh, as for your gear, try and get a good mix of defense bonus and prayer. What I have on right now is super tanky and a lot of prayer, so it works out nicely. Alright, let's go to Abatol. Okay, uh, make your way over to Garkor, who is located next to King Awooge. Go ahead and talk to him. Uh, tell him that King Narnode sent you. Say that it is worth a shot. Uh, next, make sure you have your aim of the monkey speak on and talk to King Awooge. Uh, tell him that you are here to discuss military strategies. Say, of course, my king. Once you are done talking to King Awooge, ask the guard to leave and make sure you talk to Garkor next. If you don't talk to Garkor, this is not going to work, so really quick. Go talk to Garkor. Uh, the next step involves you running back to the entrance to the, uh, the Abatol Island. Where all the, uh, the monkey archers are, so follow me. Once you have arrived at the top of the hill, there should be only one monkey archer you can talk to. Go ahead and talk to him, and he should tell you where Kruk is located. Alright, now, you should see some footprints in the ground. Uh, you don't really need to follow these. I'll show you where it's at. It is located pretty much directly south of the uh, little arrow logo, and you want to investigate the jungle grass. You can clearly see that there's a trap door down there. Go ahead and enter. Now, this is the part where things get a little confusing. As I said, this is on day one. I don't know exactly how this works, but to my understanding, everyone's tunnel is slightly different, as in which direction is correct. So I'm going to show you what direction I have to run in, and I might end up failing a bunch, who knows, because it's, it's, there's gonna be a lot of dead ends, if you will, so I'm just gonna let, let it run, and, uh, just watch where I go, and you can get the gist of where you're supposed to be going. Uh, put on protect from range before you head down these rocks, and then again, I'm just gonna start running, and, uh, we'll see where your path ends up taking you. Okay, so here is a prime example that will show you when you've gone the wrong way. I just tried to slash this web and it says, The web is so tough you can't slice it. Find a different one out. That literally means, it's like a slap in the face. It means, turns around, it means turn around, go a different direction. Okay, now there will be one of these rooms at some point that has a chest. Make sure you unlock and sh and look at these chests. One of them is going to contain a key that you need at the end of the run. 
Uh, it'll say the chest is thwarts all the, with all your efforts to unlock it, perhaps try another. That one will let you know which one is the correct one. As you see, I search it and I get a combat damage key. Again, make sure you ki make sure you open these chests because you do need that key. Okay, now you've arrived at the part where. Okay, now that you have a okay. Okay, now you have arrived at the agility obstacles. You can either take one of two paths. You can either jump on the pillars or walk on the rocky ledge. It is completely random. One of them will work, the other one will not. I'm going to try this one out, and as you can see, I did not fall, which means that this is the path I am going to follow. If you were to fall down, all you would need to do is run north of where you land, and you can climb up a rope, and it'll bring you back up this hole right here. Okay, now you're at the part of the quest where some people might panic and run across this. However, if you look carefully, there is a clear path. Now, I'm gonna, like, draw this on or something. Okay, you know what? Just watch my mouth. Okay, Matt, watch my mouth. Sorry. There is a path that you can follow that's kind of drawn out if you look very, very carefully. So, you see where my mouse is? Watch it. You see how the path my mouse went along kind of has these like later shades part of the ground? That shows you what parts you can walk on and what parts you can't. If you walk on the wrong part, you're going to fall. But again, it's really, really easy to see if you actually just look at it. Now, once you go in this cavern ent entrance, you have to fight Crook. Crook is super duper simple as of right now, okay? Again, this is like day one, so what I'm about to show you may not work. If it doesn't work, what you want to do when you fight Kruk is pray range and use piety as much as you can. However, again, on day one, I have a tactic to show you that hopefully they won't patch. And I don't know if they can because, I mean, it's just part of the environment. But what you want to do is bring Kruk on over here. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to give credit to a friend. I watched a friend do this and it seems awesome. So credit to a friend for this for sure. Uh, once you have him over here, walk to this spot up here, so he's standing in this area, and then run right here, and you can now flinch him. So if you don't know what flinching is, basically I'm going to hit him once, and I'm going to walk back there, and I have to wait now until his health bar goes away, and then I can hit him again, and just repeat that, and he will not be able to hit me. Again, they might patch this, but if they don't patch it, just do this, it's easy. Okay, once Kruk is dead, take his remains and you will get Kruk's paw. Now, next, you're going to have to go through the original Monkey Madness, like the first Monkey Madness. You're going to want to go through that tunnel. You're going to want to go all the way through it to Zooknock. You know, the guy that makes you uh, the Monkey Grigris. So make sure you have a Monkey Talisman and Kruk's paw, and I will meet you at the end of the tunnel. Alright, once you have reached the end of the tunnel, go ahead and talk to Zooknock. Talk about your mission, and he will craft for me. A really, really cool Gree Gree that turns me into Kruk, so I get big-ass swords. Okay, now that I have the Kruk Gree Gree, I need to go talk to King Awowo Gay. Alright, once you have talked to Kruk, go ahead and leave and talk to Garkor once again. Once you talk to Garkor, that will, that will mark the end of chapter number 2 of Monkey Madness 2. Alright, so for the start of chapter 3, you're actually going to be fighting a monster at the Troll Stronghold... And a monster at the uh, at Yanil. So at the start of chapter three, you're actually going to be fighting a monster at the Troll Stronghold, and also a monster south of Yanil. So I would recommend bringing high level melee gear. Uh, you can also bring range if you want to save spot, but I didn't have any problems mailing on my Iron Man. So, uh, anyways, go ahead and teleport to Trollheim to get started. All right, once you've arrived, go ahead and talk to Cobb. Uh, I know about your deal with the monkeys. After that, uh, go ahead and say, you won't be around to crush anyone when I'm done with you. At that point, put on Protect from Melee if you are meleeing him. If not, you can safe spot him by running over here. And he can't get through the doorway, so you can range him. But again, I'm going to melee. When he is almost dead, he will call off the fight, and you are good to go. Alright, next you are going to... 
fight a monster just south of Yanil. I think it's called Gutanoth or whatever, but uh, make sure you have 20 gold coins. Uh, you need 20 gold coins to get across the bridge to go fight him. Alright. Once you're here, you're going to see a man by the name of Keef. Yes, you have to fight I Am Keefers. Go ahead and talk to him again. Uh, say, I'm looking for a fight. Alright, so once you're here, you're going to want to talk to Chief Keef. Uh, say, I know your deal about the monkeys. Once again, same deal as before. I could offer to spare your life. Basically, to talk some shit. And you want to fight him once again. Except for challenge. Uh, you can save spot him. Just the same as the last one. All you have to do is use the bridge. And kind of go back here a little bit. And you can save spot him. But again, if you want to use melee, you should be fine. And just before he dies, just the same as the troll. He will not want you to kill him. And you'll be good to go. Okay, at this point, you need to go back to Apatol and talk to Garkor. Alright, go ahead and talk to Garkor. He will tell you to find Lay Smith. This part can be kind of annoying because you don't really know where he's at. You kind of have to figure it out. Uh, there are a few common spots. Uh, he's sometimes at the top of the main gate, like where you usually get into Apatol. Uh, you can find him on the third floor of the jail. Uh, pretty much, you just gotta look around, honestly. I can put a list on screen of the usual locations, but this part can honestly just take a while. So here's Assistant Lee Smith for me, uh, what I had to do was go into the Monkey Temple, make my way to the third floor, and then walk across the rooftops, and here he is. Again, it's annoying, just look around. Uh, once you find him, go ahead and ask, I was going to ask you the same question. Uh, go ahead and say, why is that? After that, say, whoa, gay has already informed me about the battleships. Uh, ask, where is the fleet currently? And after that, he will reveal to you that they are building an airship. After this, go ahead and uh, talk to Garkor once again. Alright, once you have found him and talked to him, go ahead and report to Garkor. He will basically tell you that you have to go do the worst part of the quest. Alright, at this point, make sure you go to the bank, uh, grab a monkey speak amulet, your crook monkey gear, and then wear your best weight reduction gear. Stamina potions, a little bit of food, and I will meet you all the way on the west end of a batol. Alright, all the way on the west side of the island, you will find a monkey guard and a boat. Talk to him, and you will go through some text options. Now, of course, I've been there already, so you don't see the whole thing, but just talk to him, ask him what's going on here, and then ask if you can uh, go to the construction platform. Once you get to that point, I'll tell you the construction platform. Now, this is, this is the maze. It really, really sucks. As of right now, there are no maps whatsoever, so it's kind of hard to show you where you need to go, but I'll give you the basics. So, there are monkey guards that walk around. If you walk in front of them, they catch you and they bring you back to the beginning. I'm going to give you an example real quick. You want to turn around and catch me there, big guy? I'll have an exclamation point above his head, and it'll tell me back. Okay, so, what you have to do is use these little, like, cutouts from the main path, uh... I'm gonna zoom in, see where my mouse is? See how there's like kinda like cutouts from the main areas? You gotta hide in those and the, the goal is to get six satchels, fill those satchels with like dynamite and then blow this whole place up. So all I can really do is show you me running and hopefully you can mimic what I'm doing. Okay, so here's the first ladder. Do not go up this ladder. This one comes later, okay? So make sure you don't go up this ladder. Okay, congratulations. You officially found the satchels. Go ahead and grab six of these bad boys. Don't feel too accomplished, though, because, well... You're just getting started. Okay, once you have six of these, you can uh, go ahead and go back up to the top. Okay, so now you have to do a bit of backtracking. Uh, make sure you climb down this ladder really quick. When you climb down this ladder, you remember that first ladder I stopped at and I said don't go there? Well, that's where we're going now.
Okay, now you're going to see a barrel. Go ahead and search the barrel a bunch of times uh, until it tells you that you can no longer take out explosives into the satchel. I'm gonna be honest, I've been fortunate that I haven't been caught yet. I probably will, but I'm doing pretty good so far. Okay, anyways, once all six satchels are full, now we have to go plant them. Uh, now, I don't know what the best order of, like, where to go to plant them is, but I will show you where to plant all six the best that I can. So just follow where I go, as we've been doing. Conveniently enough, the first one is located just south of uh, where you went down the ladder. Go back up the ladder, go south a little bit, and then use the satchel on the compromised floorboards. Alright, now we're going to carry on and find some more of them. Okay, here it is number two, just south of that ladder you went up, uh, go back down the ladder, and then come directly south, and there is a compromise support beam. Go ahead and use that on there. That is two of six completed. Alright, next part, you're going to come over here and swing across these vines. Uh, there is a couple, there is one, there's one to the north and one to the south. It doesn't really matter which one you start with, I guess. I'm going to base it on which way uh, the monkey way out there decides to go. Okay, as you can see, I took the north pass first. If you take the north one first, go ahead and use the satchel on the compromised floorboards. You are halfway there, congratulations. What the hell? That was... No, he caught me! God damn it. Okay, so here's the situation. This is what happens. I guess it had to happen eventually. The unfortunate fact of the matter is when you get caught, they empty the satchels. So I keep the satchels, but now I gotta go back and get more gunpowder. So hopefully you remember how to get more gunpowder. Uh, I'm not gonna record this for like, you know, I'm trying to make this video less than like an hour long, you know, so... Uh, I'm going to stop the recorder for a sec when I get more gunpowder, and then we'll pick up where we left off. Okay, so I have refilled all of my satchels. Alright, I'm just, it's, it's, I, I wish I had a map to show you, but hopefully you know where I'm at. So I'm going back up the ladder after I just refilled my satchels. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do one that actually is a bit of a backtrack, so I'm actually going to head back towards the entrance. Okay, so, like I said, this one's a bit of a backtrack. Uh, you have to go back towards the entrance and put it on the pillar. Okay, dude, fuck this. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so we got two left to go. Um, I remember where one of them is, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit cloudy on where the other one of is. It's, it's very, it's very difficult to keep track of these, and this is why this part is so annoying. But we're gonna find them. Okay, well, from here, I think I'm gonna go back across the vine once again. Now, remember, last time we went north to do to do that one. Now, we're gonna go south instead this time. Alright, so here is the first gas cylinder. Once you put this bad boy on there, you've only got one left to go. I'm a little bit lost right now, but I'm gonna figure it out. Okay, I remember the final one is, uh, my starting point for the last and final one is going to be right after I picked up the gunpowder, you go back down the ladder, and then we'll go from there. Once you get to this area, there should be another ladder standing right next to where you just climbed up. Go up this ladder once again to get to the tip-top floor, and from here, you are going to want to go to your left. And here is the sixth and final thing you have to rig. When you do find your six, you will definitely know. It'll say that should be enough. Now I just have to get back to the boat. Uh, just a useful tip. You don't have to get back out safely. Just go ahead and get caught. Once you have all the ones planted, you can get caught. It'll take you back to the beginning. And when you leave, you should get uh, a bit of an explosion animation, if you will. With that, congratulations. By far the worst part of this quest has been completed.
Okay, once the maze is done, you are going to land in the south part of Abatol. Once you land down here, you actually need to go to the bank and grab a hammer. So go ahead and go to go ahead and go to the bank, grab a hammer, and then after that, come back to Apatol and talk to Garkor. So once you've gone to the bank and grabbed a hammer, come back and talk to Garkor once again. He is going to send you to Kruk. Now, if you recall where you killed Kruk at last time, you had to go down that trap door. Well, we're going to the same place. All right. Now, this time when you go down the trap door, rather than going south to run through the maze, you're gonna want to go north instead. Uh, be sure to re-equip your Kruk Monkey Grigri. And then climb across these monkey bars. Okay, once you're across the monkey bars, go north and enter through the passage. We are about to get to my favorite part of the game. Now, unfortunately, I have already done this. So you kind of have to do what I say and not what you see me do. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so because I've done it, it's not there. But when you first come in here, there should be a gorilla that is standing right here. Click on the gorilla and you get to ride it. No joke, you get to ride it. So once you've mounted the gorilla, go down the stairs, um, and then the little gnome dude is going to tell you to fight the gorillas. There should be like three gorillas out here, so fight the gorillas until they're all back in the cage. After that happens, you're going to see a cutscene where he pulls the lever. After that, search these crates until you find a chisel. You usually get it pretty quickly. Sometimes you get some random stuff, but you want a chisel. Alright, there we go. Once you have your chisel, go back up the stairs. Take off your monkey Greek Greek to go back into human form and then go up to the north and you're going to see a device. So go ahead and tamper with the device. It will give you kind of an onyx looking thing. Use the chisel on the onyx, you will break it. And then use the deconstructed onyx on this once again. Uh, now just to make sure it works, click on the investigate incubation chamber and it should say that it's messed up. Which is a good thing, that is exactly what you want to happen. Alright, so after you do that, go back and visit your friend Garkor. Okay, so once you're back at Garkor, go ahead and talk to him. He will then tell you to go talk to King Owooge. Once you're done talking to Owooge, leave and talk to Garkor once again. And then at this point, we are coming up on the fourth and final chapter of the quest in which the boss fights are going to happen. Uh, you're going to kind of see a cutscene happen here, and once that happens, you know you're entering chapter number four. Once the cutscene has completed, return back to Trinome Stronghold and talk to King Narnode Shireen. Alright, so go ahead and talk to King Narnode Shireen, let him know what is going on real quick, and then after that, you will get to do... What I have always wanted to do, you get to fight alongside of Neve. So run just south and uh, recruit Neve to help you. Talk about Monkey Madness 2. And uh, she will agree to help you. Recruit Neve, click on yes. Now once you go ahead and do this, make sure you go to the bank. We're not going to be doing the boss fight just yet, but you will have to kill some demonic gorillas, so... Um, as soon as his cutscenes are over, go ahead and hit up the bank and put on your best melee gear. Now, once you're geared up, uh, run north towards the Grand Tree, and you should see some demonic monkeys around, and you're gonna want to fight them. Generally, when you see them pop up, they will have arrows above their head. Just pray melee and use piety, and they'll be very easy to kill. Once you've killed enough, Neve will tell you that you, uh, she thinks you have dealt with enough of them. At this point, you're actually going to begin the boss fight, so go, go ahead and hit up the bank. For these next coming fights, you are going to need melee and range hybrid setup, so I'll show you what I'm going to use. Okay, so this is the gear setup I'm wearing. Uh, again, you want a good mix of range bonus, but good defensive bonuses, so here's what I'm wearing. Uh, Sir Pelm, Abyss Tentacle, DFS, Bando's Taz, that's Carol's Top, etc, etc. And I'm bringing a Blowpipe. I think the best combination you can use is an Abyssal Tentacle and a Blowpipe. It seems to work quite well. Now, huge disclaimer, please hear me. You are in an instance, meaning that anything you don't protect, you will lose. When I die, if I don't protect these things, I cannot get them back, okay? So if you die or something... Don't, don't say that I didn't warn you, okay? Don't say I didn't warn you. Alright, so make sure Neve is following you again. 
And then at this point, go ahead and run. Well, Neve, come here, goddammit. Make sure you go through all the dialogue so she actually follows you. And then what you're going to do is run a little bit. Actually, save your run as much as you can and go to the northwest of the Grand Tree. And here you're going to find Garkor. Alright, click on yes to leave the gnome stronghold. Uh, you're going to cross over the fence. You're going to see some of these tortured gorillas. Do not fight them. Just turn on protect from magic. I mean, I don't even know what to pray. It's either magic or range. Because they can use either magic or range. So just turn on either protect from magic or range. And uh, run on past them. You're going to see a cavern entrance. Go ahead and click on the cavern entrance. Again, there's the warning. Items in here be permanently lost. Uh, again, I would recommend turning off your energy. Try and save it for a little bit. Um, so just some uh, information about what's coming up here. You are going to have to fight four gorillas. This is not quite the boss just yet. Once you fight the gorillas, you can bank before you fight the final boss. Um, I'm going to try and briefly explain to you what these gorillas do. They can attack with either magic, range, or melee. Now this is how the mechanics work. After, after three times of them hitting a zero on you, they will change styles. So say one is using magic. If I turn on protect from magic, and he hits three zeros in a row on me because I'm praying, he will then switch to the next style. Now you can predict whether or not it's which which style it's going to be, but hopefully I explained that pretty well. Um, I'm gonna you know let you watch my kill and hopefully you can kind of get a, a feel for how this works. So when you walk in, Glow is going to threaten you basically, and one of the tortured gorillas is going to hop down. Uh, so drink your super combat potion and begin attacking him. Let's see, he is starting off with range. The range attack is when he grabs rocks and throws them at you. Now this one over here is using magic. The magic attack is when he shoots that green looking thing. So, um, it is actually quite easy on this part simply because Neve helps you out. Uh, now if I had to make a recommendation, don't actually kill the tortured gorilla. Because when you kill one, the next one comes down. So my recommendation is get both of them as low health as possible and try to finish them both off at the same time. That way, you're only going to have to fight one at a time, you see? Okay, so now the demonic gorilla spawns and this is when things get interesting. As you can see, they are using protect from range and protect from melee. So you have to actually pay attention to what you're attacking with. See how it's praying melee? I gotta put on my blowpipe and attack it now. Uh, now you will get hit with two things at once, so... You can't protect from both. Uh, this one is meleeing me. This one is maging me now. Now mage does a lot of damage. So I would recommend praying against magic if that one is being used. Um, so this is pretty much how the demonic gorillas go. If you're on a high level account, it's really not all that difficult to be honest. Uh, just try and pay attention to what they're praying and what they're attacking you with and you should be perfectly fine. Okay, once the last demonic gorilla is dead, you're going to see a cutscene coming up here. Uh, no spoiler alerts, I'm just going to let you watch what happens. Super depressing. Neve dies. Dude, Neve is like one of my favorite... Ugh. So upsetting. Neve was one of my favorite NPCs in the game, so that's obviously a bit upsetting, but uh, anyways, once the demonic monkeys are dead, the fight with Glow will begin. Now, luckily for you, you can go bank. Uh, pick up her Elijah and Spirit Shield dust. Press your Fs in the chat to pay respects for uh, our fallen grill Neve. It's all good, though. Okay, anyways, go back to the bank. Okay, so now it's time for... Okay, so now it is time for the fight with Glow. Uh, I don't really change my setup much. I do try and bring a few more brews for this. This boss fight is really difficult. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, it's a bit difficult, and I don't think the best methods for fighting it are necessarily known. But I do have methods that I know have worked quite well for me. So I'll pass them on to you. So again, uh, bring a hybrid setup of melee and range. Bring a good amount of brews, restores, and uh, let's get it started.
Okay, so luckily enough, you actually can save spot the first phase. So what you're gonna want to do is, I somehow fucked this up. Wow, okay. Alright, come here, buddy. What you're gonna want to do is pray melee, and you actually can get him caught kind of on the side here, so... Uh, all you gotta do is pray melee, and get him caught here, drink your ranging potion, put on your blowpipe or crossbow or whatever it is that you are using, and go to town on him. I'm using uh, dragon darts in my blowpipe for this, so I should be just destroying him. Um, now, once you get him down to a certain amount of health, you're going to notice a cutscene happening, and that is going to start phase number two. Alright, so phase number two is beginning once again. He's going to smash the rock. Now, this is the phase where what you're supposed to do is really, really unclear. Um, from what I can tell, the best thing you can do is stand at a distance, pray range, and attack him. He uses range attacks. And he does this weird, undodgeable thing where he shoots rocks at you. It's, it's very, very strange. And again, I'm making this on day one. Um, the best way to fight this may not be what I am doing. But I'm just going to show you what I do, I guess. Um, now, early on, some people thought that you could sidestep these rocks. That simply isn't true. Um, I can try and do it, and sometimes he'll hit, a low, he'll hit a low number on me. But it's purely coincidental, so... Again, for this phase, I believe the best thing you can do is just pray range and use your range weapon on him. And just try and tank as best as you can. Okay, and once that phase has been completed, you are moving on to the final and by far the most difficult phase. Uh, this is the part where your melee attacks are going to come in. Okay, so on this last phase, you're going to want to pray melee, and you're going to want to make use of your combo food as much as possible. Uh, he's going to push you around the room, it's going to be really aggravating, but trust me, all you can do is just pray melee, and keep on trying to hit him. So when you run towards him, he's going to suck you into the room, as in you can't leave at all. Uh, so he's going to suck you in, turn on, protect from melee, and piety, and uh, well, good luck, do your worst. Uh, if you have pretty high stats, you can do some pretty good damage to him. Um, you usually won't have too hard of a time with it. You're going to see in a little bit, though, he does hit through prayer. Having prey melee on is crucial here. If you don't have prey melee on, I think his max hit is something like 60 or something absurd when he hits you against the wall. So this phase is very, very dangerous, especially given the fact that it is an instance, you know. So if you die, you're going to lose all your shit. Alright, so he's got 17 health left, should be the killing blow there, and there we go. There it is, glow completed, that is the final boss beaten for Monkey Madness 2. The cave is going to start collapsing, you get teleported out. Congratulations, you did it. Okay, so once you have killed him, uh, you're going to want to go back and talk to King Narnode. Shireen. Let me check this just to make sure I'm doing the correct thing. Yeah, okay. So once you kill him, go back to King Narnode Shireen. And then you can uh, finish up the quest. Alright, my man, King Narnode Shireen. Let's wrap this thing up. This is my second time beating this quest now, so... It kind of feels good, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, be I beat this quest twice on day of release. Which is pretty damn awesome. So you're gonna see a cutscene here. In which King of Wooge joins you in King Narnode Shireen. Uh, I'll go over kind of all of the potential wards, of course, other than the base XP. So there's Monkey Madness 2 completed. Four quest points, lots of XP. Um, some other rewards that I want you to be aware of that are really nice. Um, on Ape Atoll, you no longer have to wear a, a amulet of monkey speak to talk to monkeys. And you no longer have to have a Gree Gree, and you can just freely walk on Ape Atoll. Monkeys won't attack you. It's cool as hell. Uh, of course, there are two more hidden things I'm going to show you. First of all is a cosmetic item. I'm going to show you real quick. After completing the quest, you can return to the crash site and search this crate where this person is already at. A level 98 beat this quest? Holy, that's actually really impressive. Jesus. Okay, so you search this crate right here, and you get the monkey backpack, which I think is a really, really cool cosmetic item. 
And one last piece of content, if you come to the hill and then cross over the bridge, you can talk to Duke and he will give you 100,000 XP in any skill you're choosing. I don't really know what to put it on because, you know, I'm max, but uh, hit points for shits and gigs. So that's all the hidden things as well. Of course, I wanted to make sure you knew about the, uh, the monkey backpack and also where to get the bonus XP. With that, that's pretty much... All I can, I mean, I think that's really all I can show you about this quest. I know this video was super duper long. Um, hopefully it was helpful though. Like I said, I didn't want to make this into like some sort of crazy concise guide. I just wanted to kind of make a nice long video where you can actually just see me doing the quest myself. And hopefully this helps you get through the quest yourself. Let me know in the comments below uh, what you guys think of Monkey Madness 2. I think this quest is really fucking good. I, I absolutely loved it, but guys... Thanks for watching the guide, if it helped you. Feel free to hit that like button down below, and I'll see you all soon.